Hi, I'm Seth Donahoe. Thanks for joining us for Ohio Bruins Weekly. Over the weekend, the Bruins played in back-to-back -back games, winning one and losing one. On Friday, the Bruins came out victorious over the Chicago Rebels by a score of 133-113. to The Bruins had a comfortable lead for most of the game until Chicago had a late surge to pull within single digits. But the Bruins were able to buckle down and pull out the win behind Cam Mitchell's astonishing 57 points. Brett McKnight helped lead the Bruins to victory by adding 34 points, and Boo Osborne contributed 13. On Saturday, the Bruins ended up playing a tightly contested back-and-forth game in a top-25 matchup against the Midwest Guardians. The Bruins started off slow after just playing the night before, but were able to keep it relatively close for most of the game. Bruins star Cam Mitchell went out early in the third quarter with leg cramping, so the Bruins had to dig deep as they needed others to step up big on offense. But the three-point shooting of the Guardians helped put the game away with a 119-114 victory over the Bruins. Brett McKnight led the way with 39 points and 9 rebounds, Boo Osborne added 24, and Marquise Mathis finished with 19. Now here is score on air is Randall Smith talking with Ohio Bruins general manager Terrence Coley. Welcome to the Ohio Bruins Sports Show. I'm your host, Randall Smith Jr. I'm sitting here with Terrence Cooley. He is the general manager of the Ohio Bruins. And for all of you guys out there who... Hold on, first start. It's Terrence Cooley. Cooley, okay. My fault. Hey, I, I, I was just trying to get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Ohio Bruins Sports Show. I'm your host, Randall Smith Jr. I'm sitting here with the general manager, Terrence Coley, and he is, once I, like I said, a general manager of the Ohio Bruins. He's going to share with us a little bit about who the Ohio Bruins are, what league they're in, for all you that don't know exactly who and what the Ohio Bruins are. How you doing today, Terrence? I'm doing okay, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So you're the general manager of the Ohio Bruins, the semi-pro team. Kind of talk to me a little bit about who you are, how you started. Okay, so, um, well, I kind of started uh, in 2012 down in Columbus, Georgia. Okay. And uh, I was putting a team together down there. We had a little bit of success. Uh, lost a couple games uh, during my tenure down there and uh, moved here in 2015 and kind of wanted to do the same because of the talent that I seen around the city. So. Uh, I started going to Sawyer Gym over Kingdom League. I, I started watching the Kingdom League games and met uh, guys like Ty Hun, Ty Hun Johnson, Ty Hun Johnson, yeah. uh, Coach Vic, Don Sellers, those type of guys, and uh, they kind of just took me under their wing, man, and kind of just groomed me for the next few years, man. And that's how we pretty much got here. Okay. So what 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 made you move from Columbus, Georgia, to Columbus, Ohio, with the team? Well, uh, first and foremost, it was opportunity uh, for what I do, my skill, uh, get paid more here for what it was in Columbus, Georgia. And also, I just basically, basketball always been in me, so I was just started doing what I was doing down there here. Okay. Just to kind of fill in that void, because I mean, you don't know anybody moving to a new city, so the best way for me to kind of get acclimated to the city was by getting involved with basketball, something I love to do. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you play basketball growing up? Yes, I, I played high school basketball and I played JUCO basketball for uh, Georgia Perimeter College. Where I played under Mr. Alfred, Alfred Barney. Okay. Uh, I didn't get a lot of playing time, but I got a lot of experience. So. Okay. Yeah. So when did you get into the? You, did you start coaching first? Because I know general manager is kind of yeah. like a different job. Well, yeah, I, I did. Uh, I was in the library one day in Columbus, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, and this guy, his name is Alton Hicks. You know, I also played uh, under him. He was a AAU coach at the okay. time. So I played on the AAU team, uh, Columbus Blazers. We did very well. Um, and so uh, he seen me in the library. He was like, I have this Columbus River Ballers team, which was a women's, women's team. And uh, he, I need a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, he was asking me, was I still involved with basketball and things like that? So yeah, I started coaching that team and we went undefeated. So that next year, I kind of did my research on what this league was about and, you know, what could, how could I do more? 
And so that next year is when I became an owner myself in that 2012, and uh, I put together a team uh, called the Georgia Wildcats. We had to change the names a couple times. You know, again, we're trying to navigate our way through the city. And so we was the Georgia Wildcats to the Georgia Bearcats, and then um, <clears throat> Columbus Life. Then I moved the team to Atlanta, the Atlanta Live. So all that experience, man, is really what kind of created. That's why I'm the general manager, man. I kind of just, you know, been doing it for so long, man. It's just, it's in me. Okay, so for everybody who doesn't know exactly what a general manager is, including myself, I think I know what a general manager is, but talk to me, what is the actual job of a general manager of a semi-basketball pro well, team? Uh, I don't know the actual, I uh, guess, the definition of it, but I can tell you that you have to wear many hats. Um, mm. It's from uh, getting, the, getting the van rooms together, hotels. Uh, sometimes I have to drive, coach, uh, getting the, putting coaches in place. The main thing is uh, that you that a general manager is known for is placing the players on the team. So that's one thing that I think that I'm doing pretty well at. I mean, having to replace a guy like Anu, <laughs> it's no joke. So well, we got a guy coming in tonight that played for Ashton University that's uh, very re well known around the city that can that can go as well. So it's What's trying his to, name? Uh, well, his nickname is Boo. It's Elias, I don't know how to pronounce it, Elias Osborne, but okay. his nickname is Boo. And he can really, really play. So I'm excited to see him tonight, his first time with the Bruins. But that's just an example, man. I mean, people are going to get pulled off the team going overseas. Like we had a guy, Khalil McCormick from Dayton. Mm -hmm. um, he got the opportunity overseas. He really never got a chance to touch the, or play the regular season because he got pulled early. Um, Cam Mitchell, you know, um, being able to reach out to him and, and uh, putting him on this team was was. A uh, great opportunity for me because that's somebody I'm familiar with. I know that he can lead a basketball team. I know the pedigree of his family, so he kind of makes me comfortable. And then when I'm when I speak, you know, when I'm coaching at practice and I say something wrong, he's always right there to correct me. You know, we correct each other, so that's a great dynamic to have on the bench, practice, and everything. Man, we kind of carry each other, you know, emotionally through this thing, man. So. Oh, man, it's just, I think that a general manager just really have to be talented in all areas. You know, even with this uh, situation right here uh, with OMS, you know, that was something that I was hands, uh, ten, uh, all hands in on deck, mm -hmm. putting together uh, this type of talk show, uh, getting you guys to come out to film the game because uh, <clears throat> at, the end of the, at the end of the day, these players need game film. And so I think that I know what buttons to push to get these guys the right exposure that they need to market themselves. Okay. So, so you kind of spoke to me a little bit about um, players leaving and coming. Right. How do you go about as a, um, you know, a professional team finding players and replacing players? What is, what's the process of that? Oh, well, um, well, uh, I lean on my networking ability. Okay. Uh, Coach Vic, Coach Victor Dandridge, uh, Don Sellers, um, uh, those got Tahan Johnson. Those guys is instrumental in me helping me find players and navigate through Columbus, Ohio. Because the the main thing that we wanted, we don't want just basketball players. We got to have high character guys. Mm -hmm. For example, you're going into a game like in Pittsburgh. These guys beating up on you, beating up on you, and the refs are not calling it, man. It can really get out of hand. So we need guys that's level-headed, that can really hold their own. And you're like, okay, this is a basketball game. Let me step back away from this. I don't want no fights. We don't want no kind of drama like that. So that's the, that's the part that I kind of focus in on. Like, we can go get any basketball player we want, but the the – we got to have high character guys because, like I said, level-headed guys, when you're going out of town into these different air, these different towns, man, it's just the referees is, uh, I don't know. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I, I, that's, that's, the, that's the key to me is, is have, the character of the players. Have you ever had any situations where um, there, were, there was a guy who was maybe sent to you, players that were sent to you and they didn't make the team? Is there oh, yes. anybody getting cut? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had players that was on our past teams that kind of expected to be on this team. And, yeah, I get called all kind of names now. You know, I get all kind of messages and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, you know, I got a job to do. My job is to make this team as talented as we can because, honestly, Columbus, Ohio love basketball. And, mm -hmm. I mean, they really watch what we do. So I want to put our best foot forward. 
and it's not about friendships. So I'm, you know, I'm friends with everyone, I think. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about basketball. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's all I want to do is win. You know, I'm not from here, but I take on that same attitude of Columbus, Ohio. And, right. uh, again, I'm not a Buckeye fan, right? But, they, I mean, y'all love the Buckeyes. You know what I'm saying? I love that y'all love a team like that. I love that energy here. So, yeah, it puts that in me, man. And so when we go out and we represent, we go to uh, Chicago, Indiana, man, I'm Columbus, Ohio, 100%. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So I love the pedigree here, man. So that's I that's always it. tell people Ohio is a football state, but Columbus <coughs> is a basketball town for right. sure. So when you go out of town, um, how many how many games do you play away and at home? Uh, the unique thing about this league is you try to get as many games on the road as you can. Okay. So you, we try to put together like backs to back, back to backs. Like um, uh, I think we went to Indiana. We played the Midwest Guardians one night, and then the next night we played the Indiana Lions. Okay. So, and we went one and one on that trip, but you know, like I said, it's just uh, it's the grind of the ABA, and also you got COVID going on, and we fighting through the winter too. This I think this is a tough winter to fight through. Uh, it wasn't this bad last year, so um, yeah, man, this this year is is been tough, but I think that is 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 building a monster. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we getting a lot of uh, we working on a lot of uh, a lot of the kinks out this first season. Okay. And. And like I said, on the road, when we go on the road, man, we try our best to get as many games as we can on the road. Like, uh, we got a long road trip to Atlanta and Jacksonville coming up, so we want to make sure on a road trip like that we get two. So you got about how many games do you play a season? Uh, we're sitting at 16 right now, but again, you have COVID going on, so it's, you know, you got to be leery of cancellations. You got when meat and potatoes of the, of the winter right now, a bunch of snowstorms throughout the Midwest. So I think that we got to take that into account as well. So, I mean, we're going to try to get to our 16 games and uh, get into the playoffs and win this thing, man. So, okay. So, I'm going to wrap it up here. Okay. If you're an aspiring basketball player who's left college, who's looking for somewhere to play, how would I get in contact with the Ohio Bruins to get a shot to play for them? Uh, I would say uh, our Facebook page, the Ohio Bruins on Facebook. Um, that would probably be the best place to go right now. Right now, we're getting a, a real nice website built, so we don't have our website up right now. So, but. Instagram and Facebook, we, we uh, reply back very quickly. Um, well, we're a three-headed monster, me, Dez, and Casey, so uh, you'll definitely get a reply back. You can send us your game film, resume, and we can see what we do. We'll bring you into practice, uh, get, uh, get you a, a little tryout or whatever we can do, man, to see if you can play on this team. This is, uh, once again, Terrence Coley. He's the general manager of the Ohio Bruins. I'm Randall Smith, Jr. We'll be right back with the Ohio Bruins Sports Show. All right. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. I'm sitting here today with Mano Steger. He's a player, former player of the Ohio Bruins. He's just got a contract in the European League. And we're going to talk to him today a little bit about his journey in this semi-pro professional league. How you doing today, Anna? Doing great, man. Glad to be here and, uh, you know, thankful for T to set this up and all you guys around here. So, appreciate it. All right. So, kind of tell me a little bit about your basketball history. Um, are you from Central Ohio area? Yeah. So, I grew up right down the road um, at Upper Arlington. Uh, and I went to Upper Arlington High School from graduated in 2016 and went down to Western Carolina, uh, about 45 minutes west of Asheville, down in North Carolina. Played there for four years, um, had two great coaches, and then came back home. COVID hit. My plan to be out of the house a lot sooner than now, but, you know, just thankful for the opportunity all in all. And then also Terrence came knocking at my door, said, hey, we got an opportunity to come play, um, you know, play against some competition and get out the house. And so I was like, I need some film and uh, some good runs. So I was thankful for that and the little short time that I had over there with them. So 
Pretty good. So mm -hmm. um, talk to me a little bit about your experience at Upper Arlington. I know you said you, you were a graduate from there in 2016. I, I've heard of Dane Goodwin. Uh, I'm not for sure. Was he a teammate of yours? Yeah, okay. he, he was two years younger than me. Um, and I had a good experience there. I didn't have the typical Division One recruit route. Um, my freshman and sophomore year, I played on freshman respectively and JV um, my sophomore year. But our sophomore year, um, our senior class, or uh, our varsity class went to uh, the state finals and had a chance to win it ultimately and should have won it. Um, but I had the opportunity to be uh, on the scout team, a really key part on the scout team, had a really key part in just the whole um, you know, motion of that run as a practice player. And I took and me and uh, uh, the, our scout team, we really took, you know, that, that role serious. They asked us to play a role, mimic them. And, you know, we thought we gave, gave them a good look. And I learned a lot through that because I wasn't on the court, wasn't, you know, um, relishing in all that success that they were having. I was more behind the scenes and, you know, I just kept grinding, you know, my day will come, my time will come. Um, and then around the, my junior year mark, Coach Casey um, brought me up. That was, Dane was playing really good. Uh, we had a couple of returners from the championship game. So, you know, it was a dogfight for a starting position. Right. Um, and I was behind our starting four for the last year's state championship teams, or mm. running team. So I had Mike McGovern, who's a great player right in front of me. He ended up going down our second game, and I started my, our third game in the junior year. And uh, that's kind of just where I was able to, you know, show my gifts, show my skills out. Um, I really flourished in my junior year, and then more of a role. Uh, my role became even much bigger my senior year. But, you know, I had great players with me. Um, Dane Goodwin, which you alluded to earlier, great player, um, awesome talent. He was a sophomore. And then Max Smarts, another really talented freshman, came in uh, my senior year. So we were pretty stacked. Would have loved to see us all in the same class and see what we could have done. Um, but, you know, had a great journey with those dudes. They ended up having a lot of success for themselves. And then, um, you know, went down to Western Carolina. Freshman year, we um, I, I was able to start around 23 games, um, get in a groove, got accumulated to Division One basketball. It's definitely a step up. You know, it moves a lot faster than high school ball. But um, I had a really neat uh, kind of transition into college basketball that not a lot of players have. So, Coach Hunter at you or at WCU, he coached. Uh, back in the day at Wittenberg and my high school coach played for him at Wittenberg mm. um, Coach Casey was an All-American uh, Knows the game really well learned a lot from him in high school And then I just I jump up a level and then I get you know where all of it came from the master I got to learn right, from it right. from the master as well So that was really cool for my two freshman and sophomore year of uh, college sophomore year I hit um, the sophomore slump mm -hmm. pretty hard, um, wasn't playing my own game, was kind of in, you know, I have a spurt here and then fall off a little bit. Um, and we had, a, we had a lot of good players on there that, would, that came in. It's just different times. There wasn't the same season as we had our freshman year. So um, after that, Coach Hunter stepped down sophomore year. And Coach Prosser came in, um, son of Skip Prosser over at Wake Forest, and okay, right, great right. basketball mind, um, came in totally different offense. So, like, when I came in from high school to college, I was playing a similar offense than I was, and then now we're playing an open, uh, you know, go play ball screens, uh, you know, shoot the three ball, and it kind of, it wasn't a, um, I, w I don't wouldn't say there's any restrictions on me in the offense that I had with Hunter and Casey, but I just felt like a lot more open, playing my own game, uh, letting the flow of the game, you know, tell me where the ball needs to be. Exactly. And my junior and senior year is kind of where I flourished with the sense of uh, I had a, well, I had great counterparts too, um, Mason Faulkner one of the best point guards just that I, I watched some of my highlights and the pass comes from him where somewhere that you would never dream there was he could make that pass unbelievable and then I had Carlos Dotson a force down low which helped with everybody's like focusing on him shoot 
the shoot the ball back out to the three pointer. So I had a lot of good counterparts, but it was just that offense, the way it flowed, really helped my game or expo like exposed what I could do, gave a lot of exposure to you know a lot of talents that I have outside of just shooting the ball and um, you know so. That was kind of my role. And then Coach Prosser, um, you know, always alluded to the fact that I could have a pro career and, you know, always gave me, and so did Hunter. But, um, you know, as you get to junior and senior year, you have more of like a decision, you know, which way you want to go with right. things. And they always just said, you know, dude, you've got a resume that could um, lead to a pro career. And so after my senior year, talked to Coach about it preseason during the season all that stuff um and then COVID hit and kind of took a hit um so we've just been we've talked to some teams and then they fell through COVID this COVID that so right now just was super blessed to have the opportunity to go play for the Bruins and then you know another um, team come along and being able to you know jump to that with ease is really awesome and just a blessing overall so right um got a couple questions for you real fast because we got to wrap up my producer was just oh. telling me you said you didn't get recruited well you didn't say you didn't get recruited but you had like a wacky recruiting um other than western carolina were there any other division one schools that were recruiting you so that was uh, um i had a different uh, like i was saying earlier you know you you see these big powerhouses asking these guys with tremendous talent but i grew six and a half inches going from sophomore to junior year oh, okay. i didn't grow yet i haven't filled in my body there's a lot of people who at that freshman year stage could compete on that varsity level i wasn't there yet and so i allowed and i talked to my dad about this all the time and i should be here instead of here and he just let the game you know like chill out and it'll come and everything just keep working so you know i just put my head on the grindstone and sophomore year came along and i grew everything started to flourish and then a lot of people or a lot of um like the colleges that were coming to me after au junior and senior year were division two division three teams and um thankful for them but it just i had a connection with coach hunter and so the only Division one team out of all of them, whereas Western Carolina offered me a scholarship. So, you know, that was a no brainer. But I mean, I talked to a couple teams, nothing really developed. So I'm thankful for Coach Hunter and believing in, you know, this talent and, you know, see where we'll see where the ball takes me. So now you're going over to where again in Europe? Uruguay? Uruguay. I'm going, I'm going to, to Europe, South America. South America. Yeah, so yeah. you Uruguay. have an opportunity to get paid for doing what you love. Yeah. Kind of explain that to me. What's that like? Um. Or what's it going to be I, like? I, when I was talking to my dad the day I signed, and it's just, uh, I, there, we were just looking back on the years, and it's just so funny. I was thinking, it's like, imagine sitting back and telling your seventh grade self you're going to be a pro basketball player. Right. It would be cool, but you'd, who knows if you'd work as hard as you would have from that day, because you already know, you know. So I was just talking to my dad and just like, you know, all this work that I've put in from the start, seventh and eighth grade when I started taking it seriously just kind of was uh, weight off your shoulders because it's the high school was the dream or college basketball was right. really the dream and then now it's cherry on top it's house money I'm going to play for fun I'm going to play for the love of the game I'm going to play you know just to see where this ball can take me because I'm going to travel someplace that I've never been to so that life experience is just something that I can't like I'll never be able to trade. So that's why I stuck with it for so long during COVID, especially is like, this is my dream. I want to go play basketball at the next level. Uh, I think I have the opportunity and the ability to do it, do it well. So, um, you know, let's just ride this thing out. And, you know, this team in Uruguay reached out. And so I'm super excited about that. It doesn't hurt that you're going to get paid to do it. It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> I would pay to do something I love is, you know, just especially something that, I've been working on playing since I was in third grade and just like the fact that you're at that echelon that one that one percent just helps out and just, yeah getting paid to do something that you love is 
<laughs> you wake up every single day, it's not work. Right, right. Well, glad talking to you, man. Yeah, I um, appreciate it. it. it it's, uh, um, it's a great opportunity for you. I'm, I'm glad you got that opportunity. And I'd like to probably, you probably have to thank the Ohio Bruins for giving oh, you, getting, that, getting that chance to get that film out I, I there. Do. So, I do. Um, congratulations to you, man, and blessings to you. I appreciate it. Uh, thank once you. again, this is um, Randall Smith Jr. We're sitting here with Arno Steger at the Ohio Bruins Sports Show. Um, we'll be right back with you. Perfect. Thank have design ideas for t-shirts but you're not sure where to go? Go to Mojo Sports Gear. That's right, Mojo Sports Gear. At Mojo Sports Gear, you can get custom-made shirts. Whatever design you need, Mojo Sports Gear can provide it. Don't forget to grab a custom-made cap on your way out and rock the best headgear in the game. Give them a call at 614-864-6656. At 614-864-6656. We are back at the Ohio Bruins Sports Show. I'm your host, Randall Smith, Jr. I'm sitting here with another Ohio Bruins player. Uh, this is Cameron Mitchell. He is not related to the steak guy, Cameron Mitchell. He wanted to let me know to call him Cam on air. So how you doing today, Cam? I'm doing good, man. Good little drive to drive up here from Cincinnati, Ohio. So, you know, you know I like coming to Columbus because it's almost like a second home to us for real. Okay. So, um, saying you're from, you're from Cincinnati, Ohio, you told me that off of air. Taft High School. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about Taft High School and when you started playing basketball. Man. So, I started playing basketball when I was probably like four years old. Mm. So, I've been playing a game been with me around, shoot, for a long time. And I was blessed to have a twin brother and another set of twin sisters. And we compete and play literally every single day. We still get on the phone and talk about ball every, like, now. But um, but most of the time, though, is I, I just, you know, it's just, I don't know, bro. It's just basketball just been in me for a, a while. My dad, Mark Mitchell, been playing, you know, been coaching me since I was, since I was four years old. Uh, my mom been playing the game playing the game, you know, played the game when she was in college, and then she installed it to us. So, man, I mean, the basketball, for me, has just been around me for a long time. And then my dad, who was, you know, like I said, with my coach in high school at TAF at the time, and at the time it was kind of a, a funny situation. You know, how some sons to go play with their fathers, you know, you mm -hmm. get that first gig, you know, you about to play varsity. No, nah, it wasn't like that for me. For me, uh, I had to, you know, find my way. You know, I had to earn my way. And that was the one thing I, I, I got to give my father more respect than anything when I play this game because he showed me how to compete. He showed me how to grind and get, get to where you want to go. He showed me how to, when things get tough, hey, find a way. And so my junior year is when I finally got my first start. Uh, and I wasn't even supposed to start. And you can tell my dad to this day, I was not even supposed to start. He was like, hey, man, I got another guy in front of you. I'm like, all right, man. And that summer of AAU, uh, my sophomore year going to my junior year, I literally, like, turned the page. Because that year before, in 2008, I want to say, it was 2008, I was just mad because they was at the district, and I was in the stands. Mm. I wasn't even on the bench. On JV? So, I wasn't even on JV at the time. I was probably, I, I think at that time, they, my dad put me, like, like, I was on JV, but I was still, like, like below, you know, Not I was dressing. like, yeah, you know, I was, you know, <laughs> so, but, um, but, uh, so like that summer I told my dad, I want to be good. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good, but I want to be separate myself from these people. I want to be on the Jared Sullinger's cause that was the guys I was looking at. You know, like I said, Columbus been with me for a long time. We, we competed Cincinnati Columbus for a long time. And Jared Sullinger, you know, he was one of them guys, the, the one staying the day ain't, one of them guys. So I was like, I want to be like them. I don't want to get on that stage. So that summer of, like I said, of sophomore going to junior year, I literally just told my dad I want to grind. And we grind. I was like in the gym every day. And then I found a way that he said, hey, you need to go out there and play. And no matter what it was going on, what wreck I was at, I would go out there and play. I don't care what type of guys out there. I was like, look, I got to play. Mm -hmm. Push me, foul me. I don't care. I want it. I need it. So that AAU, it was like I started to get the looks, you know, started to say got interest from colleges. Wasn't no offers or nothing like that. It was just interest. And it kind of like woke me up. Like, all right, I'm, all right. So then, like I said, going into high school my junior year, first game I dropped 
20 points, 20 some points. And it was like, who is this guy? The whole city was like, because when you play in Cincinnati City basketball, it's, I don't know how it is up here in Columbus, mm -hmm. but the city league basketball is like, like huge. Mm -hmm. Like it, everybody knows throughout the city. So when they seen me play that first game, it was like, who is this kid? And then the next night I dropped 26. Mm. Then the next night, he's like, oh, who is this dude? Do you remember who you, uh, who you scored that first 20 points on, 26 points? Yeah, Aiken, uh, Aiken High School, okay. big rival for Tad. It's a big okay. rival for Tad. Uh, then the next night, I dropped it on Hughes, Hughes High School. And they all city, they all city schools. Right. So it was, it, was, it was big. And for my father to see what type of player I could be, he said, hey, I got to let, take the, you know, take the, Take the chains off you and your brother because mm -hmm. me and my brother at the time we was really we was trying to find our way but like it was like we don't know what to do but when he said hey let me take a step back and let y'all go we like all right now we got it now we see what we can do now we see what we, and we took it and ran with it and that's how we've been playing for a while man me and my brother and that's how my sister and you know i mean everybody know kelsey mitchell up here in ohio oh yeah ohio state so um that's how she that's how she got what she got because i mean literally when when I was in the gym, she was right there with me. When me and my brother was in the gym, she was right there with me. She was right there with us. And my dad was right there all the time, training us, pushing us, the whole grind, uh, uh, the whole nine yards. So it was just a blessing for me to have the game of basketball in me, but also, also I learned it. Learned it the way and, and found the way how to enjoy it and be, you know. So when would you say your, your love for the game, like, first? I, I, I didn't get a chance to ask you at first because I asked about Taft, but when did you think your, your love for the game first started? Uh, I say the love for the game first started for me, honestly. Ever since I picked up the ball, when I seen Jordan in 90, 90 I want to say 98, I think it was his last – the last trial, I think, the last mm -hmm. little, the last dance. When I seen him play and I seen how he played, I said, wow, that game looked fun. And literally, me and my brothers and sisters, this is when I literally fell in love with the game. My, me and my brothers and sister literally had, a, like, you know, them little, the little hoops. Everybody had the little hoops, mm -hmm. right? Um, at the time, my sisters was, like, knee high, like, literally. So me and my brother had to get on our knees and play. And when I say we played so hard, my dad had to come downstairs and be like, what are y'all doing? Oh, nothing, just playing basketball. And from then on there, I just, every day, bro, like a ball in a rim, playing. But when I really started to enjoy it and like really fall in love with it, was my sophomore year going to my junior year. Okay. So um, you spoke about Jared Selinger. Did you graduate? What year did you graduate from Taft? 10. Uh, 2010. 2010. Okay, yeah. so coming out of TAP in 2010, uh, how was the recruiting process for you? Or did you Ooh. get any recruits? At all, any recruitments or that one? I ain't getting no looks really. I mean, I did. I'm not gonna say it was. I ain't getting no looks, and I ain't gonna disrespect the schools that actually showed some interest. But I got. Like, I want to say I got one, one or two offers. Mm. One from Walsh University, and then the other one from uh, the other D2 school. Um, can't remember Lincoln Moore, Lincoln uh, Lincoln Memorial. Okay, and that was the I know them the two schools that really showed interest. Uh, I had interest from D D ones, but it wasn't no like no hey we gonna offer you because I never had that. I know some people had that you know go visit the schools and stuff like that. I had never had that chance to go do that. Mm -hmm. My family wasn't like able to like have you know say hey you and your brother got you know pay for tickets and stuff like that, that was a lot for my family. So it was like. Whoever showed you, you know, show interest, whoever can pay you, you know, your way to school, you know. So where, where did it. you end up at college at? I ended up at Walsh University. Okay. And I played there for two years. Okay. Um, loved it my first year. I was behind two All-Americans. One guy, Jeremy Shardo, who to this day, uh, hands down, no disrespect to my boy. I don't know but nobody that, you know, I played with, even my boy that I tell you back, Jake Simpson. Um, he's literally, you know, the best white boy I literally played against, played with, literally, hands down, because he really showed me what hard work really was mm. in college. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What you want to, if you want to be the best player, this is what you got to do. And when I came in my freshman year, that was the person I had to go up against. Mm. So, one-on-one -on -one drills, 
shooting drills. He beat me every day. I mean, I never beat him, and uh, but I competed. I was getting on. <sighs> he'd be right next to me, mm. dead tired because we could. He showed me how to compete, but I was like, man, I don't want to be just like this though. I want to, I want to show, I want to show the people that I'm good too. And he showed me the way. And I was blessed to be there my freshman year, being behind him. Uh, unfortunately, in my sophomore year, uh, I had a really good summer. But me, at the end of the summer, me and the coach couldn't really see eye to eye. Um, at the end of my sophomore year, I'm sorry, at the end of my sophomore year, going into my junior year, me and him couldn't, couldn't see eye to eye. So I didn't wind up uh, leaving and going to Indiana University Southeast mm. down there by Louisville. Okay. And down there for two years, and I was fortunate to play for Wally Brown. Uh, and from there, I think that's when my game really started to really flourish into the – the guy that people you know know who I am, the, the score and all that other stuff. But that's when I really started to, you know, get out there a little bit more. Um, I was down there with my brother because uh, my sophomore year, my brother uh, ended up leaving. We went to we went to Walsh together. My brother ended up leaving uh, sophomore year, and then after sophomore year, um, my brother went to Cincinnati Christian. We reunited in uh, my junior year, our junior and senior year, we finished together. And I think that was where, you know, I started to have the fun for the game uh, reimbursed to me, you know, because my sophomore year, I kind of was like, like, I don't know if I really want to do this. Right. It was like, I'm going through this and like, it ain't fun. And so at the end of, like I said, at the end of my sophomore year, that's when I said, I, I got to leave. I'm gone. So. So, so what led you to the Bruins? We have about a minute left. Um, okay. Tell me uh, what, what landed you, how did you land with the Bruins, and, and what does it mean, and what has it meant to you to be a part of the Ohio Bruins? Man, I had landed with the Bruins, what, I knew Terrence two years ago, I want to say two, maybe a few more years ago, other than that, maybe four years ago. Um, he was start trying to start, start the Ohio, uh, the Buckeye show. Mm. And him and my mom was trying to start a, a, a ABA team to get us out there because I wasn't fortunate to get a pro deal right out the back. I was fortunate to play with the ABA team down in Jacksonville, and they gave me my first pro look. But after that, I didn't have nothing. So I was working, grinding to get something. And then I was fortunate to go to the ABA. I mean, I'm sorry, fortunate to go to uh, Mexico because, you know, he didn't have nothing going. So I was fortunate to get a deal. So after that, when I came back from Mexico, I was fortunate to go – to um i set out i set out a year and then i was fortunate to go to uh, play with the kentucky uh, enforcers from mm -hmm. there i went to, to the dr so when the covid hit i had set out you know everybody set out i didn't know what to do terrence hit me up and say hey i'm about to start the ohio bruins cool whatever y'all gotta do i just need some film to get myself back overseas because i want to continue to play overseas so um he hit me up and say hey man we're gonna do this for you we got we got a nice package deal for you, and we really want you to, you know, flourish and take the higher Bruins where we, uh, where we need to take them. And I said, cool, man. I'm like, you know, you know what I can do. You know where I'm, you know, I'm capable of, and I'm just here to, you know, play my game. And for him to actually be willing to say, hey, we, we, we want you to come here and do what you do, that was, I, you know, what I needed to hear because I can be who I am, relax, and enjoy the game that I love to play. So being with the Ohio Bruins is a blessing for real. And every single day driving up the road, going to practice, I mean, for me it's never, it's never a complaint because I love doing it because of the game, but also because they also put so much in me. So I, I, I got to give it back. I always pay them for it, you know. Right, right. Um, well, everybody, that's it. Um, had a good chance talking to uh, Cameron Mitchell of the Ohio Bruins. Um, be blessed, man. You're doing something that you love to do. For sure. um, appreciate talking to you, man. I'm Randall Smith. This is Cameron Mitchell. In sports, you want to have a player that can get the job done right every time. A real all-star. Somebody that's dependable and you can turn to when the game is tough. That player in the audio-video industry is the theater. From setting up your home's Wi-Fi network and offices, conference rooms, to setting up home theater inside or outside, to setting up the systems to make your home run smarter and safer as well, the theater people can do it all with the quality of professionalism, you can expect every single time. That isn't just a great all-around player. That is an all-star. That is why we are the leaders in audiovisual installation in Central Ohio. So call us at 614-604-6327 or check out our website at ttpcolumbus.com to figure out which products will fit you. And don't forget, 
amplify your personality with the theater. We're back at the uh, Ohio Sports Bruin, uh, Ohio Bruin Sports Show. I'm Randall Smith Jr. I'm sitting here with um, Anno Steger and a special guest that he brought today, his father, Anno Steger Jr. And um, he's just here to talk a little bit about how he felt about his son playing for the Ohio Bruins and what the experience has been like being a father in the stands, able to watch his son play. How you doing today, Mr. Steger? I'm doing fantastic. Um, glad to be here today and excited to be part of the Ohio Bruins. You know, when you're a young man, you play basketball yourself, as we've heard some other people on the show talk about. You know, it's exciting. It's the only thing you think there couldn't be anything better. As you get to be an old guy, it's kind of fun to, to grow up and watch your son grow up and play ball with him, follow the high school experience, get into the college experience. You know, as a father, you, you think you're kind of in extra innings because a lot of dads don't have that, uh, that opportunity. And then to catch this with the Bruins, it's really exciting. So um, I, I, I don't know for sure, you know, what any information that you had about the Bruins before he uh, became a Bruin. Did you see a professional deal overseas coming out of this situation with the Bruins? Yeah, we were, we were hoping one on. I was talking to some people. I know COVID's changed a lot of people's plans this year, um, but it was a great opportunity because uh, he was working out hard. He was running with some guys at Ohio State, you know, trying to lift, stay in shape. Uh, and then, you know, the Bruins contacted him. I think he went and then ended up going to Indianapolis with him for the first game. But the ability to play against those guys in the gym every day, work out with them, just develop the friendships. Some of these guys have been overseas. And that experience, you know, he hasn't had. So it's invaluable to get, you know, get out there, spend the time with the guys. And then the way they treated him, I thought, was just unbelievable. They brought him into the mix really quick, helped him with some things. Um, you know, and I like the, the way these guys play. You know, they, they understand how the game's played. Ball should go to the open guy. Game will tell you where the ball should be. Um, they play that way, they work hard, they run hard, and as a team, you know, they're really strong, both from the top, the coaching staff, the ownership, it's been fantastic to, to watch how those guys operate and what they try and do for the kids. Mm -hmm. What T's done for the kids is fantastic. Um, and then to see the older guys like Cam, who was on the show a few minutes ago, right, just to hear his story today was fantastic. And the way he treats people and gets them involved in the game, it's, it's really something special. So if you got somebody in your life who's playing hard, wants that opportunity, needs to get some film, it's something you should get out and do and reach out and contact these guys because it, it'll make a difference. Right. Um, I had a chance to talk to the general manager about an incident that went on at one of the games. Kind of share that with the people who wasn't there uh, about that situation that went on. We went uh, a few weeks ago over to Pittsburgh. It was, uh, you know, Pittsburgh in the winter. Mm -hmm. A lot of hills, icy, tough place to get to, and a tough crowd. You know, they're not going to give you an inch in this league, <laughs> nor should they. And so we go over there, and Anna's having a pretty good game. I think he had uh, 8 or 12 on, on one of their guys pretty quick, and uh, he wasn't real happy with it. So, you know, they started pushing him, hitting him, trying to, to uh, intimidate him the best he could. And that, you know, usually with Anna, that just excites him. He's ready to go. And so this kind of escalated going through the game, and, and I think he had 29, if I remember correctly, at the end of the day. Uh, 29, 26. 29, yeah, those. on him, and, and, uh, and Coach wisely sat him for the second period, trying to keep <laughs> trying to keep the, the <laughs> home ahead school. <laughs> yeah. But the interesting thing, we get done, and right, the uh, opposing coach sends over a frozen turkey to my wife and I, and uh, somebody said to me, well, why do you have this, where'd you get this turkey? I said, well, the coach gave it to me. Now I'm sitting there holding this huge frozen turkey. And they go, what's all this about? I said, well, nothing says sorry for beating your son up for three quarters like a frozen turkey. It's the only thing I can think of. So, <laughs> Here they get us, uh, so, so I, know, I know you were in the middle of the game playing. Did you see any of this stuff when this game was going um, on? No, I mean, I started out the game just every, like every other game. I was just, you know, I got in a flow pretty quick into this game. And um, the guy passed it to me when I was open, so my first thing is shoot it. And so I was hitting some shots, had a couple of easy buckets right at the start, and you know, um, then it just he just, I, I don't know, it, it was honestly just a flash for me because it just came out of nowhere. Um, but you know, that's basketball. You know, it gets physical. I love when it gets physical. I think um, there is 
you know, there's a point today in today's game where the physicality deters and it depends on the refs and the game and everything and all that stuff. But I love physicality. It makes it, it's an extra, you know, factor to the game that you got to incorporate. So, yeah, it got a little physical pretty quickly. But, you know, that, that was a fun game. All the dudes, you know, they dap me up. When you're in between those lines, you got to know it's war. So, right, right, right. Um, after the game, all the dudes were just, you know, they gave me their proper gratitude, and it was good. So Okay, I'm going to wrap this up here real fast. Um, got a question for Senior. Did, did you play ball? I did. I played at uh, University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Okay. Uh, for a few years, and that's kind of an interesting story. I played a year of JUCO ball, different than what you heard Ono talk about, where he went right into Division I. Um, you know, I played center in high school, and nobody knew if I could play guard. In those days, it was kind of when you started at 6'5 to start coming out as guard. So I played a year of JUCO ball at Shawnee State University. Okay. Here Are you in, from here, here in Central Ohio? Ohio? I'm from little, I'm from the big city of Waverly, just south okay. of here. Okay. <laughs> played under C.D. Hawhey for all those uh, old timers out there watching this, who was a legendary coach, and okay. Gabby Smith also, who's well known in these parts. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had the opportunity to play at uh, UNCW for a couple of years, and uh, you know, tremendous experience. A little caveat I'll tell you about Ano playing at Western Carolina is, is every time that we walked into the um, the gym. The gym, it was kind of neat because there was a banner with a jersey hanging up there. It was number 20, uh, who was worn by Mel Gibson. Mm. And Mel Gibson was an All-American at Western Carolina. Really? And Mel Gibson was my college coach. Really? So, the actor yeah, Mel Gibson? Yeah. No, it the actor Mel Gibson. It was oh. another Mel Gibson uh, who was an All-American there at Western and then ended up uh, having a short pro career with the Lakers. Played two years behind Jerry West. Oh, okay. Uh, before company. he got into coaching, but it was kind of interesting every time I walked in there and when I talked to some of the older players who played with him who still live in the area, it was kind of nice old hometown week seeing your coach's jersey hang up there. Right, right. Well, I'm glad that I had a chance to talk to both of you guys today. Um, once again, wish you best luck. Um, I know you're very proud of your son and um, just keep, keep, keep doing it, man. Keep going. Yeah. And that wraps up this week's show of Ohio Bruins Weekly. Be sure to check out this week's game where the Bruins take on the Steel City Yellow Jackets on Saturday. You can find the game on scoreonair.com and Score On Air Network on YouTube. Coverage begins at 2.30. I'm Seth Donahoe. Thanks for checking in, and we'll see you next week.